Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today we're taking a look at the Hellboy board game from Mantic Games. Um, this is a one to four player solo or cooperative board game where you're basically going through BPRD case files, encountering giant monsters, and doing all the things you would do in a Hellboy comic. Um, it's lovingly illustrated with all kinds of Mike Mignola like actual art. The miniatures are super cool and have pretty much the most iconic characters. You got Liz Sherman, uh, you got Abe Sapien, you got Hellboy himself, uh, and then you got Johan Krauss as your four characters come in the box set. Uh, so this is the retail copy. Uh, you also get some frog monsters, a giant frog, some crazy tentacle beasts, and um, tons and tons of counters, swag, cards, your deck of doom, um, everything you need to actually run the game. So we're gonna run you through the first case file, the BPRD um, investigation called Cleaning House where you are clearing out some frog monsters. You found a big nest of them, and there's gonna be a big one. They, they tell you that from the beginning, there's always a big one. Uh, you're gonna kill them as fast as you can, learn as much about them as you can, and then try and, uh, and defeat the boss monster before you go to your next case. It is a crack and play sort of a, a, a game where you have case files, you don't know what's in them until you open them up, and then once you've been through them once, you can replay them as many times as you want, but the surprise is basically that you're gonna have procedural instructions in each case file to set up and play a game. So I'm pretty stoked about this. I played through the first mission, uh, and we're gonna play it through for you guys right now, uh, showing you how to play Hellboy the board game. So here it is laid out in all of its glory, the Hellboy board game. Um, it does come with, I'm not gonna crack it open to show you right now, um, but sized packaging for everything inside, so it does pack up neatly back into the box when you're done. Um, and you get every, all the glory that you see before you, except of course for the tote, um, the dice tray, and my coffee. Uh, we'll Game of Thrones this and just throw a, throw a Starbucks cup in there. So, <laughs> uh, as, as per usual, I can't play anything without painting all the models first, so. Let's focus on the big four. We got the man legend himself there, Hellboy with Abe Sapien. Um, they'll be going through the first mission for you guys to watch. And of course we have Liz Sherman and Johan Krauss, um, two other BPRD agents. It does focus on this BPRD team. Um, although of course there's, I mean, this is the kind of game where there's tons of room for expansion, new monsters, new bad guys, uh, and of course new BPRD members. There are going to be support characters but they're tokens, not miniatures. So you have Bud Waller, Scott Clark, Kate Corrigan, and Sidney Leach that can show up as backup agents. Um, and they have little markers that'll move them around the table. Then you have as your big bads, uh, you have of course the um, the tentacles of Sadu Hem, the big purple tentacles, because you can't have a, it's not hell that weird tentacle monsters uh, of the Ogdu Jihad. And then you have Rasputin, who can be in ghost form or actually show up. And you have a giant frog monster um, you know, does what it says in the tin. <laughs> is a frog monster, is giant. The frogs are kind of like the manifestation of the Ogdu Jihad in um, like our, our plan of existence. And so you also get frog spawn markers, so these like swarms of frogs. They don't really fight or attack or move around, but they downgrade all your heroes when they're in the same room with them. Um, and you have to kind of clear them out because they build up, makes it really hard to do anything. And there's four types of frogmen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the transforming ones, they're all cowardly, they run away from you until they turn into rampaging ones, the ones with the arms up there. Then you have armed ones and um, venomous ones, so the ones with the tongues out there are spitty ones, and the armed ones of course have like boat hooks and stuff to fight you with. Uh, and then you have all your cards, so you have your uh, big boss cards, um, like I said, backup agents, requisition cards, like your actual equipment cards you can attach. All your monster cards, um, and then you have your giant monster cards and your boss behavior cards. You have uh, all of your encounter cards, your doom deck, and then the case file. So I've only opened the first one. You can see there's a stack of them here, um, and you, there's like a, a, you can do them in like a specific order. But you open them up. You don't you don't go any further than actually like the top card. So it'll say stop. Don't read these. Put them down, um, and you set up your mission, your HQ deck. So it actually flips during the game. This is the side you started on, and you've got some areas here. So first of all, you have your doom tracker which the card will explain how to set up, but you just put your first doom marker to one, or to zero, sorry. Then you have your insights, which you can learn about the big bad that you're gonna fight. Um, you have your priority marker, and every character you can see has a little targety thing on here, of how dangerous they are. So 10 for Hellboy, he's always tops, uh, and then six, seven, and five for uh, Johan and, and Liz. And then you put the colored marker associated with their base ring in the priority, and so, Whenever uh, the game calls for someone to be targeted, it's always the lead character, and then that pushes them to the top, and then they basically switch being leads. So there's only two characters you're gonna go back and forth being leads. But it means that whenever you start a mission, Hellboy's always the priority target, because, you know, he's, he's Hellboy. He's just gonna walk into the danger, basically. Uh, you get lots of tokens. These are your damage tokens. They all start flipped. 
but they can all have an effect on them. They'll downgrade your dice when you get injured. Um, and so they start, you just get like flush wounded until you fill up your damage track. And then when you start getting wounded on top of that, they flip over and they can have various effects. Like for instance, this one's going to downgrade your fight. So your fight drops a dice color. Uh, you've got your insight tokens. So these can be clues that you can get if you learn about someone. Uh, these are event tokens. So usually you place one of these on the doom tracker and there can be a card in here associated with it that you'll have to flip over if the doom tracker gets there. And there's a deck of doom. Um, every mission will have like little symbols and it'll denote which deck of doom cards to put in there. And then you always put in the deck of doom cards for the characters you're using. So for instance, there's Hellboy, Abe, and Liv's and uh, Johan specific cards that you'll add to the deck of doom. So right now only the Abe and Hellboy ones are in there and the other characters aren't participating in this mission. So you're not putting them in. Uh, you've got your action counters. So each character comes with three. They're handy, but you don't really need them. Uh, and then you get your dice, and dice are all just color graded, so from worst to best. So a yellow die is the weakest, it has the least success on it, it's just a 4 plus basically to get 1. An orange die is 1s and 2s, a 3 plus to get 1s and 2s. A red die is a 2 plus to get 1s, 2s, and 3s. And there's no misses on the super dice, <laughs> but no one has the super dice as a stack. Basically, when you upgrade a die, you change a die from one color to another. So if you have a stat, like Hellboy has red fight, he has superhuman fight skills. Um, when he upgrades a die, it would switch from one of these to one of these and you add to the pool. Um, if he downgraded a die, it would go from this to this. So real, real simple dice mechanic system. You're just doing opposed successes typically, or like a target number. Um, so the, the bad guys never roll dice, just the heroes roll dice to resist their attacks or to, um, or to uh, save against damage or, or hit them basically. And they have like a damage threshold they're trying to hit. Uh, then you have your starting cards. So each person has like their special rules, um, their unique actions that you can see you spend a number of dice to do. And then your special cards are the thing you start with and they'll be listed on your, your actual like card here uh, along with your damage track. Uh, and then really that's it, you get your rule book, you get your rebe first, and then you have all your in-game effects and stuff like your clues, those are your um, support characters, terrain pieces, holes in the ground, uh, and your doors. And then finally you have all of your pretty pictures, so you don't really know how to lay out the map until you crack your case file. I've already laid out the one for this map, um, and you have a single starting zone, this is always the starting zone, and there's I think five, six corridor tiles, which are all double-sided, and five big room tiles that are all double-sided, and they get arranged in various ways, depending upon your case file to create your like exploration thing you're doing. Um, so yeah, so in this one we are doing, it was right, eviction notice, <laughs> that's what it's called. Um, yeah, and, and this is case number 126799 of the BBPRD, so it has a challenge rating of easy and a duration of short. And it's about frogs, and they're like snakes and scorpions and ravens and black cats are traditionally considered harbingers of doom. This is born of the folk tales such as one from Africa, where, uh, which sees a man's prayer for eternal life ruined by a frog who sees a bleak future for his own species should man flourish. It's no coincidence that the chief minions of the Ogdru Jihad are the frog monsters. These amphibian hybrids are able to shapeshift, taking the forms of men to further their never-ending quest to bring about the end of the world. So it's these guys right here. Um, one of our field teams has cornered a particularly large specimen in an underground crypt, and agents are to report to the scene and deal with it before it escapes. So you read the eviction notice, and then you immediately flip it, and put it to the side here, and that's going to show you your Deck of Doom setup. So the Deck of Doom consists of all the cards with these icons, so this one, this one, this one, and then all for the characters. Uh, and then the encounter setup deck. So you want one blue card and two red cards in the encounter deck, which I've already pulled. And then your board layout, your starting area, and then the doors. And you can only move between areas if there's a door basically adjacent to the square to do so. so then put insight markers on spaces 2, 4, and 8 of the information grounded track. So we want to go to 2, 4, and 8. So when we hit that with insights, we get to pull these counters and put them onto a card. And they represent boosts when you're fighting the boss at the end. So the more clues you gather as the nature of the monster you're fighting, the better you are fighting it later on. Um, and then put a reaction marker on this card and it's matching trigger marker on the following space, the impending doom track. So if there's two agents, it's space seven, four agents, space five. So I'm gonna put it on space seven. Move this card to the in play area and discard it if the confrontation begins. So it goes up to in play, which is up here. And this card goes on to here. Uh, if the impending doom marker reaches the trigger marker or if all the agents are knocked out at the end of the time, skip the end phase. Uh, skip to the end phase, sorry, and flip this card at the end of the phase. So this is going to be where, where it triggers the big the big boss showdown. 
and then this gets revealed, you immediately resolve it afterwards. Move this card to the in play area. If the agents take time, put this card immediately after advancing the impending doom track. Now we've revealed this card, so we resolve it. You head underground where you see obvious signs of frog monster infestation. Yeah, your target should be around here somewhere. Clear out its brood. It'll have no choice but to show itself. So prepare the minion slots as followed. So minion A becomes a rampaging frog monster. Minion B becomes a venomous frog monster. Uh, minion C is an armed frog monster, and Minion D is a transforming frog monster. If all rooms have been explored and there's no minions on the board, at the end phase, flip this card and begin the first round. So with everything set up, our heroes are in the starting area. Let's talk about the anatomy of a turn, so the round summoning. So first is the enemy phase. That's when all the enemies take actions. Now, usually the actions will be described in the card for the type of enemy on the board. Um, and they'll target, of course, the lead character whenever they do anything. Uh, it's generally easiest just to do character or monsters in the order um, of, of their deployment. So do the rampaging ones first, then the venomous frog, then the armed frog monsters, and the transforming frog monsters. Uh, and they'll each attack in order. If there is a, a big boss on the board, but that won't happen for a while when we flip this deck, um, they would go before all the other monsters go. Then there's the agent phase. Now you can do your or your actions in basically any order that you want in this game. Uh, you can stop a one character acting to do somebody else. Like the players just agree on how to do it. There's no set like like structure to how you activate. And you have a bunch of like common actions like move, move two squares. Uh, each enemy in an area you leave take a damage or move with you. So the enemies follow you when you move around unless you take damage. But you have to spend action dice to evade them. Um, and when you evade them, then they just do damage instead of coming with you. You can fight, so spend an action die to fight. Um, you downgrade it by one die for each additional enemy, so if you're outnumbered, it gets worse. Uh, target server's damage equal to their score minus their resilience. So you roll your fight dice, whatever they are. It's always a test of three dice plus the um, bonus die in here, which has special effects I'll get to in a minute when we do an actual test. Uh, and then you're trying to go against the resilience. So like Hellboy would roll if he was gonna try and punch a frog monster. Red dice plus this. And get a total of three successes. So minus the resilience of a frog monster, which is two, he does one wound to it. You should put a wound marker on that, that frog monster. Um, and then if you do enough to, to kill it, it's just taken out of action. It's really simple. Then you have shoot. It's the exact same procedure except using the shoot stat. You have to have line of sight. So if it's a door, you can do a straight line. There's no no, no angle lines out of there. Um, if you're in a room, for instance, though, as long as you can go straight line from your square to the next square, then you can shoot. It's just like a normal attack. Just a different stat. Examine. So there has to be a clue, which is one of these markers right here. Uh, and if there's a clue in your square, you can do an examine action. So you make an examine roll. So for instance, Abe is going to use orange dice. And there's a target number of three. So you get one insight if you get a three or, uh, or four or five. If you can double the required score, so six or more, you get two insights. So you're trying to boost your examines really high because you want to get to these markers. So when you fight the boss, you're all geared up. Then there's interact, uh, interact with a point of interest, special scenery piece. So if the, the game dictates one of the things is interesting, you can spend an action to interact with it. And then you can clear, if there's no enemies in your zone, but there's a fire counter or a frog counter, you can remove one for an action cube. Um, and that can be really handy with fires because they grow and go out of control. Um, and frogs because they downgrade what's in the area. And also for every two frogs on the table, uh, during the impending doom phase, you uh, you have to advance the doom marker because the frogs are like just a, a representation of things getting scarier basically as they build up. And there's also free actions. So you can trade during your activation, so once the action phase. You can hand off like upgrade cards to each other if you want, and you can also explore. So if you're next to a door that's uh, an unexplored room that hasn't been explored yet, then you will uh, reveal the contents of that room. Basically, you'll flip an encounter card, and that room will become explored. You'll get to see what's into it. You can also spend additional action dice to upgrade your actions. For every extra action dice you put into an action, you can upgrade one of its dice. So for instance, Hellboy, like I said earlier, gets fight dice of red. He can spend additional action dice to upgrade one of them to being one of the super black dice, um, which is super cool. Then obviously you have your unique action, so I can taunt, move Hellboy's marker to the front of the priority queue. He can make someone come fight him. Uh, big red hook, or big right hook, when you make a fight action, if you hit, the uh, target takes three additional damage and is stunned and hurled, so you can throw people across the room. And then throw furniture, you can move scenery pieces and stun people, so he's really good at like, beating stuff up. Uh, and then strong arm for Abe, for one die he can hurl somebody. 
uh, precision shot, make a shoot action, ignore all the scenery and all the characters other than the target. And for two slip away, you can take them off the table and have them disappear and then show up somewhere else. Then you have your special rules. Uh, when he makes a move, he goes three instead of two and suffers no damage when evading, so he can just like walk through enemies. Uh, rapid healing, when he takes time, he heals additional two damage. And quick reflexes, when he fights, shoots, or um, he can spend the this result on the bonus die um, to remove an action cube and put it back on his board. So he gets extra actions, basically, which is awesome. And then Hellboy has seen it all before when he does an examine test. Um, he upgrades two dice instead of one when he spends additional action to do it because he's just, he's been around. He's fire resistant. He never suffers more than one damage from fire or fire attack. And then shake it off. He can uh, spend this result in a fight test to heal two damage. So he gets mad. So once you spend all your actions, you get a rest phase. Uh, you only get it if there's no enemies on the board though. So if you clear all the enemies out, you can rest. And then you can do one of three things. So... You can investigate, so discard a clue counter on the board and advance the information, so no need to roll. You can recuperate, which is roll two red dice and clear that many injuries. Um, or if there are injuries that have now flipped, you can flip back that many injuries before you start clearing them. Uh, and then you can secure, remove all frog swarms and infernos from any one room. Uh, and then your agents can uh, trade items freely, so start cards must return to their owners and move any explored area. Uh, you can basically just like trade cards and move anywhere on the map that's already been explored. And then finally, reset the target priority to its normal status. So if it's been moving around, you go back to the order in the cards. Uh, and then, yeah, you uh, advance the impending doom, because impending doom happens. Step four is the doom phase. So if you, even if you didn't rest, you always have to flip a doom card. It'll have an effect that's described on the card. You may advance the doom tracker. It may make somebody maudlin. <laughs> People get sad in this game because they're, cause they're, they're monsters fighting monsters. Um, and then finally, there's the end phase. Everybody gets their action cubes back. Uh, you reset target priority again, and you resolve any frog swarms. For every two frog swarms on the table, you have to advance the Doom Tracker once more. Uh, and then any other effects, like for instance, on the cards that are actually laid out. So we're ready for the first turn here, uh, and it's real simple because there's no enemies on the board yet. We're just gonna we're just gonna make an explore action, see what's in this room. So help opens the door. So now. You'll see that every card, explore card, has a certain number of things on it, and you basically place them in order, moving away or moving clockwise around a room. So for a two square room, it's two in each, and then you move away. So this is gonna be Minion B, which in this case is a venomous frog monster. You got a clue, so you're gonna place a clue marker. And then you're gonna place uh, a frog swarm in the next square over, and then you're going to place scenery, number two. So it doesn't matter which scenery piece it is, but it has to be a size two scenery piece, which is basically one of these. So the size the size of a scenery piece is how much it takes up in a room, um, and it counts as that many models, basically. So there's a chair in there, or a table, or something like that. And it means that um, each square can occupy up to six models. Uh, big guys usually count as three, and that chair is occupying two spaces. So once a square is full, nobody can go into it, and you're just kind of stuck. Uh, yeah, so we got some frog swarms, we got some stuff to look at, uh, and that was a free action, so it didn't cost any cubes. So let's go with Abe, he's gonna bust some caps, he's gonna spend an action cube, uh, and he's gonna throw his shoot. So his shoot ability is red, uh, and he's shooting at a venomous frog monster, which has a resilience of two. So that means I gotta I roll a two or better, basically, sorry, whatever my result is, it'll be minus two damage to him. So three red dice, and this blue die, uh, and we'll see what the results are. All right, so I got um, a this symbol, which is a reroll. So I can choose to reroll one of these dice if I want, and try and get a higher score. I'm gonna reroll one of the ones. I get a two, so it upgrades. So I get a total of five, minus two. He takes three damage, so I place three damage cubes next to that venomous frog monster. All right, so we might as well try again, because we could kill him with a decent roll. So we're gonna roll again, second action cube. And we do one, two, three, four damage, which goes down by two. Not quite enough to kill him. So we're gonna have to bust one more cap. And see what happens. It's more than enough in that case. So that is uh, minus two is a total of six damage. So he's toast, take him off. Remove all these damage cubes. And that is Abe done. I want to, I could go back and forth with uh, Hellboy, but we're not gonna bother. Um, we're gonna spend one to have Hellboy move. Uh, and then one, two to have him see it all before, uh, and that means that he'll upgrade two dice from his orange normally for examine uh, to red. So it's going to be one orange, two reds, and you always roll this bonus die as well. Ha! All right, so I have a reroll, so I'll reroll one of the reds. 
I only get five, I didn't get quite to six, and that means that I only get to advance the clue marker once for that clue. Everybody's done, so it's end phase. There's no monster, so we can rest if we want to, uh, but that would advance the doom tracker, so there's probably no point in resting. What we'll do instead is we'll do the doom phase, flip a doom card, and we get a times a wasting. So we advance the doom tracker by one. End phase, everything resets. There's not enough frog swarms on here uh, to make any uh, additional doom there. There's only one. So we'll go with Abe. Abe's gonna go one, two, and then he's going to um, uh, spend one to clear, which will remove this frog swarm. And he used the one to move, so he can go three total, but he's just gonna move the two. He's gonna explore as a free action. We'll see what's in this room. So this room's gonna have minions C, D, a clue, and scenery. So uh, minions C and D are gonna be a armed frog monster and a transforming frog monster in this square. And then there's a scenery one and a clue. So a clue right here and a scenery one. Some junk on the floor. Uh, so that means we need to go and try and, I guess, either fight these guys or shoot them. I think we're just gonna shoot them. So we'll try and shoot the uh, the armored one because the cowardly one's probably gonna run away. Yeah, that'll be my last action with Abe. So he's got a red, red, and a blue. And we see if we kill this armed guy. Oh, that was terrible. Okay, so I got the wild card here. Uh, that's a two damage, but it's resilient too, so it's not gonna take any damage. But this wild card, I can spend with Abe's special action, Agile, to get an action die back, which means I can just do it again. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna take the shoot action again. You didn't take any damage from the first one, but I might get lucky. And I got a reroll. He's gonna take one damage. He's gonna take two damage. So it's better than nothing. We hurt him pretty bad. And Abe's done. It's how we can go. He'll spend one to move, one, two, into the square. And then do what Hellboy does, which is pugilate things. So he's gonna spend an action on a, uh, a punch and punch the wounded armed one. So he gets red dice to punch. Uh, and uh, his bonus die. And let's see what we do here. I can really make this count, but I'm pretty sure I can just kill him. And I do, so that's gonna be four damage, which is enough to take that guy out. He's only got six health. One action left, we could punch this last venomous frog monster, which is what we'll do. Uh, we're probably not gonna kill him, but we might make him hurt. And we get six damage. Uh, he is transforming, so he's only resilience one, and he only takes four damage, so before he transforms into a rampaging thing, we just explode his face, and he's dead. Once again, nobody's damaged, so there's not a lot of point in doing a rest phase. We're going to go right to the doom phase, and find some helpful skeletons, <laughs> put this card in play, so it goes into the in-play area. Uh, any agent can spend two action cubes, or a single rest action, to discard this card. Uh, then look at any face down encounter card, returning it uh, to its room, or look at the top two cards of the deck of doom, and then play some face down in any order. So I'm gonna ask the skeletons basically for help if I want, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> there's helpful skeletons down here. So then the end phase, this all comes back, uh, and we get to do our stuff. So I think we're gonna go with, everybody's investigate's kind of the same here, but I need a good investigate roll. So we're gonna go with Hellboy. It's gonna move. One, he's gonna investigate using the orange, and we'll spend the next one to upgrade. So two, three, and that means we've got a double red and an orange for our investigate. We're trying to beat a six here to get two advances. Oh, but then we roll this, which is a discard your highest dice roll. That's a fumble, a catastrophe. So we only get three, advances one, so we get one looky loo here, uh, which is gonna go into his card. That goes away, and so it's Abe's turn. We're gonna go one, two with a move. And then we'll discard these two for some helpful skeletons. Uh, so discard this card, and we're gonna look at the top two, because the, the only one kind of card left, we're gonna look at the top two of these. So summoned by the swarm, replace the frog swarm closest to you with someone else, or visions of the future. Look at the top three cards of the deck of game, shuffle them, and return them face down to the top of the deck. I think we're gonna take visions of the future. Put that one back on top with the helpful skeletons. We know what's coming next. So once again, end phase. Uh, we're gonna not do a rest, but we will drop this. We know it's visions of the future, so now we look at the top three and then we shuffle them, put them back down. So it's gonna be bad temper. Oh, that's not good. Time's a-wasting. And summoned by the swarm. So bad temper means he can only make fight actions, or he can only, one of his eyes has to be used to make a fight action. Summoned by the swarm, if there was a frog swarm marker, it would get replaced by a dude. 
uh, minion C, and then times are wasted, we should advance the track. So we'll shuffle these and put them back, and one of these is coming up. And regardless of what's next, the uh, impending doom goes up by one. So end phase, all this comes back. And let's start exploring. If we clear this room, there's going to be something bad happening. So the last encounter card is going to be minion A, uh, which is a rampaging frog monster. Uh, as close to it as possible. And then these go in, in clockwise. Uh, a nothing, a clue marker, and then a minion B, which is a venomous frog monster. Immediately get to go. Abe's just going to once again bust some caps. Uh, so he's got three reds and a blue. Shoot the one he can see because he can't see this one diagonally because he can see through the door. And that's six. We can reroll this one. Yeah, it's five, six, seven. So it's going to be minus two for five damage. So it's down to one. I'm actually going to put remaining, I think. That's just easier than grabbing all these tokens. Uh, and then do it again, because why not? Just do one. That's enough. Kills him. And then he's got one action life, but I think we'll skip over to Hellboy to see what's what first. Hellboy's going to move. Uh, yeah, might as well. I'm going to go one, two uh, for one, and then do a punch, because punching is what he do. And we'll upgrade it. We might as well. So we'll do a black die in there instead of the two red dice. And make the big hits. That's pretty good. So that's uh, six, seven, which is still only five, though. He's got one left. And Abel uses the last one. Just take a walk. One, two, three. Over there. All right. So again, now we can't rest, because there's actually a minion on the board at the end of the round. Uh, so we flip our Doom Tracker, and, oh, it's Bad Temper, so we attach it to Hellboy. Until he takes damage, at least one of his actions has to be spent on a fight, can't be spent on anything else. So then we go to the end. All right, so there's a minion on the, on the board now, so it's actually going to fight us, and it goes before all the heroes go. Um, so it is a, a Venomous Frog Monster, so it does not like to... Uh, to, to stab normally, <laughs> but it will stab in this case because it's already in melee. So if it was already, it was outside, it would shoot us, but it's gonna fight us instead. Uh, and it has a fight value, so a melee attack of five, uh, which means the Hellboy, who is the target party right now, is gonna take a, a threshold five defense check. So he's got one, two, three dice, and his bonus die. And he rolls a total of seven, which beats the five, so he takes no damage. So you reduce this total by five, and there's still a remainder, um, or it's not zero, uh, and that means it doesn't take anything. Uh, and so that frog monster's done. Uh, the priority track will now reset, so Abe's now the, the priority. And uh, it's on to the hero phase, or the action phase. He's gonna shoot into here. Uh, there's a problem though. His red dice, he gets a downgrade for each hero in the target area. So one of them's gonna turn orange. Because Hellboy is of course standing in the way of his shots. But this he only has to do one damage to this guy. And he does. Uh, and so what he's gonna do is he's gonna spend this symbol, actually, to get his action cube back. So he has three actions still. And then let's do some looking. So uh, he's already standing in that square. He might as well. Uh, take an examine, and what's cool is Hellboy can also boost that. Oh no, he's not in the same square, so actually he can't. Um, Hellboy can move first? Yeah, let's do that. Hellboy's gonna move first, and then Abe's gonna do his look, and Hellboy's gonna boost it, and that's gonna mean that uh, he gets orange, and two of them become red, because Hellboy's assisting. Because if he's been, seen it all before, whenever he assists, it upgrades two dice instead of one. And we get to six, awesome. So we get two pushes, one, two, which means we get to grab that extra insight. That will reveal that clue marker, that one's gone, which means we've cleared the room. So no one's taking any damage, there's not a lot of point in resting. Uh, it means that we flip a doom card, sorry, he's still bad tempered. We flip a doom card, and go to times of waste and advance the doom marker. But we ha now have to trigger this, uh, if, uh, the impending new marker reaches the trigger marker of all agents are knocked out at the same time. Flip the end phase. Um, move this card. Where is it? Oh, it's this one over here. If all the rooms have been explored and there are no minions on the board at the end phase, flip this card. So now we flip this card to see what happens. Looks like you cleared the place out. You take a moment to ready yourselves for what's coming next, listening out for any sounds that might give away your quarry's location. Discard any case fall cards that are in play, then the agents immediately take time as if it was the rest phase. The impending tomb track is unadvanced. Then you see it high up on the wall. So these get, these get discarded. It wouldn't go away because we didn't hit the impending doom. It's high up on the wall. It's a frog monster, way bigger than those you've been dealing with before. Uh, before it can make a move, you've already opened fire, sending it tumbling to the ground. The Lege Agent sets up the giant frog monster in any area that's visible to at least one agent, and then discard this card. So Abe is currently lead, so his his player would get to discard this guy. We'll just put him crash on this giant statue because it looks cool. And then we discard this card. So 
It's down in the discard pile. Uh, this is the confrontation. Setup is described on page 26 of the rulebook. Set up two minion B as close as possible to the boss. The boss for this confrontation is a giant frog monster. Any insights they've collected represent discoveries around the nest site that can be used to exploit its weaknesses. When an action uh, agent makes a fight or shoot action that targets it, upgrade one die for each insight on the confrontation board. So now all this stuff goes away. These go away. These go away. All these come off. This goes on top of the discard pile. And these come off and we flip this deck. So this becomes the confrontation board now. So the doom marker becomes its wound track. Uh, and it goes to 20. Because this thing has 20 wounds. The monster card goes here. And then it has boss behaviors. So these little numbered things are the behavior cards you're going to put in that deck. And that deck's going to go over here. He has a normal move and resilience. And then a health of 20. A range of 1 for, for whatever makes a range stack. A range attack threshold of six and a melee attack of eight. Oof. He's a big guy. This enemy takes up the space of three characters and it can't be stunned. It's a hard hitter. If an agent suffers four more damage from this enemy's melee attack, it's also stunned. And it's deadly. An agent who evades the enemy takes two instead of one damage. So we shuffle this and we're ready for our boss encounter. Any other in play cards go up top here. And any insights we have go onto the insight tracker. So when we target this thing, we get to upgrade two dice with our ranged and shoot attacks. And then we reset priority and put down two minion bees next to it. This sucker starts before us and it goes before all the other monsters. So boss behavior and attack. The boss makes a melee attack against an agent in their area and use target priority if needed. The boss, if otherwise there's nobody in his area, the boss moves towards the nearest area and makes an attack. Uh, and it goes towards the lead. So it moves into an area containing an agent and it immediately stabs. So it's gonna jump over here in this square with Hellboy and Abe and then make a stab. Melee attack of eight, which means Hellboy has to make a defense roll which he might as well. Abe is going to assist him to gain one red die. And Hellboy's going to boost it to gain another red die. Because this thing hits like a ton of bricks. <laughs> so let's not try and die. <sighs> Alright, so not too shabby. That's a total of one, two, three, uh, and then four, five, six. But this gets doubled because the highest dice gets doubled. So six, seven, eight, nine. Hellboy resists all the damage. So I'm lucky I upgraded that. Uh, and also roll the times too. These two little fools go. Um, they're automatically going to spit at us, uh, but they downgrade. Actually, sorry, there's no downgrade because they, they don't care. <laughs> they don't roll dice. Um, uh, this, the range attack is going to go into the square against the lead. The lead is currently Abe, though, because the um, big boss attacked uh, Hellboy. He has to resist. He normally has yellow resistance. He's kind of squishy, but he gets to upgrade one die because Hellboy's in the square with him. Um, Hellboy is not going to spend any others to boost. We're just going to hope Abe shrugs this. And the range on a Venomous Frog is a 5 attack. Uh, if the fumble is rolled on this, he gets uh, a huge action cube, though, because of the paralyzing poison of this spit. Alright, so uh, what we'll do here is we will pick this result. Abe could get an action back, actually, that way and take 3 damage. Or he could choose to use this as the times two and double this result. I think that's what we'll do is we'll double this result, make it four. So Abe only takes one random damage token and just sits it as two. So that's a, an injury. And the target priority becomes Hellboy and the second one attacks him. So now Hellboy has uh, orange resilience, which is sweet. Uh, and he gets to upgrade one to red for free because Abe's in the square with him. And oh, now he fumbled. <laughs> he loses an action die. And he takes three damage. One, two, three. Because we got a catastrophe. Whoops. One, two, three. Well, that's not good. <laughs> uh, so that is the creature phase done. We took some damage from that. It gets scary when the boss shows up. We got to try and kill this guy quick. So uh, Hellboy's going to go. He's only got one action die left. So he's going to make a fight action. But he gets to upgrade two of his dice for free. Because uh, he has two of these on here which means that we're going to sucker punch this guy hard. Now, unfortunately, his resilience is four, and he has 20 health. Uh, okay, that's not too bad. So we got a times two, which means this is four, five, six, seven. Um, so it's going to take three. One, two, three. And Abe's going to go. He's going to move for one, because uh, he doesn't take damage from moving, because he's slippery. And then he's going to try and kill these guys. I think this is going to be the problem here. I think Hellboy can probably be okay if he just doesn't die um, fighting this big fella as long as Abe can handle these little guys so we're gonna shoot our harpoon 
Yeah, I might as well try and just kill one, like as fast as we can. The harpoon lets me get plus four to a range test, and we're already pretty good at shooting. So let's do this. Uh, so we get seven, uh, and that's minus two, and then plus four goes to five. So unfortunately, we didn't quite kill it, it's got one left. Don't get a rest phase, because there is no rest phase, because we're fighting, fighting monsters right now. Uh, and so it's gonna go back to the top of the turn. The boss immediately goes and flips a frenzied attack. The boss makes a melee attack against that target. Uh, the target's each agent in the area, and then each target is hurled. So he's gonna get chucked back into uh, the same uh, square as, as Abe, probably. So he gets to make an attack. He has a threshold of eight. Uh, Hellboy's got his action cubes back. Yeah, there's not even really a point in resisting this. We're just gonna take a bunch of damage and get thrown with Abe. We're gonna take four, six damage. So one, two, three, and these four flip. Four, five, six. Oh, his defense is way down and his examination is way down. It's hurled, so he gets stunned, which means he gets thrown directly away, and Abe takes a orange dice worth of damage. Takes one damage, because he got chucked into there. And the frogs get to go. <laughs> So, Hellboy's the target right now. When you're stunned, you can't take actions until you spend two action cues to get up. Um, and you people get boosted dice against you. So, uh, sorry, they down, you downgrade a die, basically, when uh, when you're being attacked. So, the first one's going to attack. Damage one first. Uh, it's going to target... Sorry, it's actually going to target Abe first. Because Abe is um, currently priority. So, it's going to get a total of... Uh, five, and Abe gets to upgrade one die because Hellboy is in the, the room with him. So if we can beat a five here, it'll be fine. Oof, gets a reroll. One, so Abe's gonna take four. Uh-oh. One, two, three, and then four. And one of these gets flipped. He's minus one fight. And the second one's gonna target Hellboy because Hellboy is now the main target. So it gets a, Hellboy gets a downgraded die, but then an upgraded die because it's a front of the square. So his dice just say normal. And he's gotta resist a five here. He gets one, two, three, and a reroll. Four, he takes one damage. Well, he's still alive at least, but he's minus one shoot now. Oh, things aren't looking good. <laughs> so, it's on to the action phase. Um, Hellboy is now damaged, so he loses his bad temper card at least, which is nice. Uh, which means he can make things that aren't melee attacks. So we'll go ahead and first with him. He's gonna stand up for two. And he's gonna fire the Samaritan. <laughs> he's gonna shoot his, his deep pockets. Um, and I think we're gonna do the we're gonna do deep pockets as well. So we're gonna flip this card to draw from the requisition deck uh, until you find a and this is a free action, uh, either a gun, a grenade, or a luck card. I literally have to draw from the bottom of the deck. Uh, I find an ancient blade that is not a bullet card, unfortunately. Uh, let's find a concussive grenade. There we go. Roll three red dice regardless of your shoot level and apply the result to each enemy in the target area and discard after use. But we're gonna go Hellboy's Pistol. It's a ranged weapon. If the target's hit, it suffers five additional damage. So we'll make a ranged shot with Hellboy. He is minus die, so he goes from yellow. Uh, you can't go below yellow. So, yes. I think that's, that's as worse as he can get. Uh, but we are gonna use Abe to upgrade one. I think. No, we're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna go. We get two upgrades because of these, and then one upgrade down, actually. So it'll be orange in this. Ah, we might as well spend. No, we're not gonna spend anything. We're gonna flip the Samaritan. And we flip it after use for plus five damage. So we get eight total. It's resilience four, so it's gonna take four damage. One, two, three, four. And then this gets flipped. It has to be reloaded. And Abe's gonna go. He has gonna throw his harpoon, I think. To add plus four. Yeah, because we got a free rest before this started, so it would be reloaded. So he's gonna shoot it at the big monster. He gets to upgrade two dice. Um, and then, yeah, just, just let's just do it that way. <laughs> it's just two upgraded dice. Let's see, we get, oh, and Hellboy had to roll that. Oh God, he actually discarded the highest dice. So, one, two less. Good job, Hellboy. <laughs> let's do um, aim shot. And he gets a, ooh, anything we want. Oh, that's a lot of damage, okay. So it's resilience four, so these go away, but then this is gonna be doubled. I'm gonna pick the double result from the wild card to make that eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and then we'll do it again because we didn't run out of ammo and we're boosted again uh we can't throw the harp oh sorry eight plus four <laughs> so one two three four i forgot because he's got all the all the extras and the harpoon's gone and then he'll use his sidearm to do it again no bonuses this time around except for the normal ones and we get uh highest six times two so that's going to be um uh, four doubled, so that goes away, and then three more damage. One, two, three, he's gone! So we killed the big frog monster. And then he has one dice left, which he will use to just shoot a frog. The one health frog. <laughs> Let's just try and kill that guy. Get him! Oh my god, we gotta reroll at least. That's not gonna do any damage. Yeah, we did it, okay, so now he dies. Woof, are we ever beat up? <laughs> All right, uh, so yeah, that's that's us. That's our turn, uh, and then it's gonna go back to the monster. So end phase, we get our action cubes back. The monsters get to go. Um, the current target priority is still Abe, so it's gonna attack him with a threshold of five. We'll spend an action to boost and spend an action to boost uh, this defense roll. So he goes from he goes to two orange, uh, three orange because Hellboy's in the same square with him, and we have to beat a five here. We get a reroll. Four takes one damage. He's gonna lose an action die. Whew. Well, Hellboy's mad. <laughs> so, action phase. We take a step over to here. We'll do an action, and we'll have it boosted by Abe. Um, so it's gonna be this: two reds and a black. Oh, we just got the highest die. It takes one damage. Oh no! It's got five left. Why am I so bad at this? All right. Uh, end phase, we get our actions back again, but Abe only gets two now, because he's super beat up. And then this last, uh, this last monster gets to go again, it's gonna immediately melee Hellboy, who is super minus armored right now, uh, and he is the primary target. Whoa. So he is normally orange, but he's gonna be yellow, yellow orange. And he just couldn't kill that guy to make this test, because he's, he's down two armor right now. Times two, so three, so he takes two damage. Blah. Blup, and gets knocked out, oh no. So now when you're knocked out during a confrontation, you place one of your action cubes on the square and there's a chance you might come back during the action phase. Um, and you have three action dice to do it. So start of the action phase, I get to roll three dice for Hellboy, they're always yellow. As long as there's no blanks, I stagger back to my feet. No, it was a blank, so Hellboy's still down. So Abe, you gotta do this, buddy. Just blindly fire your handgun. <laughs> so he's not minus any shooting here. So he spent his first action to shoot. Uh, one, two, three. Into that frogo. And yeah, we double the total. So that's going to be six. That's going to kill him. And that'll be the end of the game. Abe with three damage boxes left is all that survives the confrontation with the frog monster. But the BPRD retrieve everybody else. And they're ready in time for their next case file. Now after your first game, you are going to be able to go and do some additional stuff. So first just select a case, we'll just randomly deal with a case. Uh, you spend your budget and you get requisition points. So that means you can actually buy, outside of like the training mission, which is this first one, you can buy requisition cards. Uh, if you have all four agents, you get a total of six credits to buy it. Um, you use cube markers to keep track of how many credits the team has to spend. Share the credits out as evenly as possible. Uh, everything has a cost. So if I was going to try and buy these concussive grenades, they would cost me two credits to buy. Um, if I was going to buy the Ancient Blade, it would cost me two. So it, Hellboy's cool because he's always able to dig in his pockets to try and find something without having to buy it. Um, and you kind of want to do that during setup and stuff. But otherwise, you're just going to go and buy, buy things to upgrade with. Uh, and then finally play some games. Uh, and you play through them until they're all done. And that's really it. There isn't like a, a campaign setting for this. It's more about... Uh, playing through these individual cases. So there's no like legacy or things to track in between games. You just do them all as one-offs, but because they're all sealed, um, you get kind of like a surprise every single time. So there we go, a first look at Hellboy the board game from Mantic Games. Tons of fun, um, a great cooperative experience, and kind of a la carte, so if you want to just get some folks together, sit down, everyone takes a BPRD agent and play through a case file. It should take you about an hour. Um, we're going to play through another one in two weeks. You can check that out, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll just crack another case file probably at random. I'll check and see if there's an order to do them in, but I'm pretty sure you can just do them in any order you like and throw down and get some other menaces, use all the agents. So big thanks for Mantic to send it along so we can check it out, and for you guys for watching, next time I'm Ash, have a game. 
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.